Yes, of course, ScreenFlow is robust, but it's also kind of complicated and a little bit pricey. So here are some excellent alternatives. Now, you probably already know about Loom.com. Loom has been around for a long time and it's free, but if you're creating videos where you record your face and your screen at the same time and you want to be able to download those like for a YouTube video or for a course or something, then you'll have to upgrade to the business plan. What I really like about Loom is the simplicity. When you consider all of the editing features of ScreenFlow, Loom doesn't really have all of those capabilities. But sometimes it's easier to just make everything look the way that you want it to look on the screen and not have to monkey with any of those editing features. And if that's the case for you, then I suggest Ecamm. So what you're seeing on my screen right now is Ecamm and I have two cameras going. So Ecamm is picking up my webcam and of course I'm recording with Tella. I'll get to that in a moment, which is picking up my actual camera. So Ecamm is a Mac only software and it's really designed for live streaming, but you don't have to live stream with it if all you wanna do is record. And the reason why I love to recommend Ecamm, it's kind of like what you see is what you get on the screen. You can lay out your screen however you want with your browser window, how, you know, wherever you want it to be located, however big you want it to be. What you see when you're setting up your Ecamm screen is what is being recorded. You can't edit it after the fact, but that means that you don't have to edit it after the fact, which is what makes it so easy. ScreenFlow is robust, but you have to figure out how to put your face in a circle and resize and move it around. And you have to do all that after the fact. With Ecamm, you can see what it's gonna look like, set it up the way you want it to look like, and just hit record and go. Now I mentioned that I'm using Tella to record this video and I'll get to that in just a moment if you wanna see how I have everything laid out and doing some of the little features and zooms and things like that. Before I get there, I wanna point out three things that you can do before you even record your screen recordings to make your videos instantly better for your viewers. And this works no matter what software you are using. Number one, if you take a look at my pointer mouse here on the screen, it's bigger than normal. And that's because since we're talking about ScreenFlow alternatives, in ScreenFlow, you can change the size of the pointer when you're editing. And in all of these other programs, I haven't been able to find a way to do that. So if you come to your system settings and then just search for pointer, you can actually change the size of your pointer really easily just by using this little slider here. You can see how big it gets. And I've been keeping mine on the bigger size because I record my screen all the time for people on my team or if I'm creating course material or something for my clients and students. It's just easier for people to be able to see where the mouse is and what I'm doing with it. You can also change the color of your pointer, which I think is pretty cool, but I'm gonna keep mine the standard black and white. The second thing is you might notice, Meredith, your desktop looks so clean. How do you, how do you keep it clean? Well, I don't. <laughs> I let my desktop get really cluttered. So before I recorded this video, and usually before I record any video, if I'm recording my screen, I just create a folder called cleanup and add everything to it. I add everything except for the external hard drive, the regular hard drive, and the folder itself to this cleanup folder. And that way I don't have to spend any time trying to get my desktop clean before I record a video. If I had to do that, then I would never create another video. And the third thing I wanna point out is to pay attention to the size of the things on the screen that you are trying to record. If I'm recording a website, for example, this is my website, this is just the home page. Am I really gonna expect you to be able to read these words? If I wanted you to, I would need to zoom in. And so this is usually what I do if I'm trying to show a website. For example, if I come over here to Tella, which we'll be getting to in just a moment, this is like 100% zoomed in. If I want you to be able to actually see the things that I'm clicking on, then I'm going to zoom way up. So this is 150 percent right here. So those are a couple tips. Those are a couple tips that you might want to write down on a sticky note and put them on your monitor because they're kind of like habits that once you remember to do them every time you record your screen, your videos are going to turn out a lot better. Now let's talk about Tella because I mentioned I'm recording this video with Tella. I'm going to do a lot of the editing 
inside of Tawa as well. And before I get to all the nitty gritty details, I wanna get you inside and show you how this works. So I'm gonna to try to record a video with Tawa while recording a video with Tawa. We'll see how this goes. You can see it's already connected to my camera, but similar to the other programs, you're just going to select your camera. I'm selecting Streamer X, because that's how my camera is connected. I also have Streamer X for my microphone and I can just hit record and it's gonna give me a little bit of a countdown. This is just going to record my face and it's just like any other way that you would record your face. Let me hit stop. It throws confetti because I recorded a clip. Awesome, love it. Now, if I wanna record my screen and my face at the same time, let me find a Chrome tab here. I'm just going to share, yeah, I'm gonna share something from my actual website. And now I can actually see on the screen what it, what exactly it's recording. I can see that I'm in my frame here. I can see that my browser window is good to go. And if I hit record, down here again it's going to give me a little countdown i'm going to come over to my tab now i'm recording my tab it's recording me at the same time it's recording me at the same time and it's recording whatever i happen to be doing here inside of my browser window so if i come over here and hit stop one of the things that i really love about tella is that you can essentially sort of edit as you go. And I've talked about editing as you go many times in the last like, I don't know, year or so, but it really cuts down on the overall editing time, record, delete stuff that you don't want. And essentially when you're done recording, you have a rough cut of your video. I'll come over here to preview and it's going to sort of assemble this video for me. So I have these two clips down here at the bottom and it's not like editing in a regular timeline. As you can see, I have these two clips down here at the bottom, I can hit play and actually watch these back, but I'm not gonna do that yet because what's really cool here is this layout feature. Now you can see I have like a green background here. I do want to use an image that I've already uploaded. This is something I actually created in Canva. So it's completely, you know, it's branded to me, however, the way that I want it. And I created a whole pack of backgrounds that you can use too, but more on that in just a second. If I come to layout, then I can select however I want this to be laid out, which is really, really cool because it's already sort of, it's polished, right? You don't have to go in and figure out, does this need a border? How thick does the border need to be? Um, should this be bigger? Should it be smaller? It already just kind of looks good. A lot of times I've been using Tala like this, where it has my screen and myself side by side, or this works too, where it's sort of overlaid a little bit. Now coming up here to the trim feature, I don't love, doing some like fine tune editing in the trim feature in Tella, which is why I take this whole project and bring it into Premiere Pro. But if you know you have big sections that you totally messed up your words and you know you wanna get rid of them, you could go ahead and do that here. But what I really wanna show you is the zoom function because I think this is one of the best ways to kind of up level your videos where you're recording your screen or recording your face and your screen. and this takes a lot of time inside of ScreenFlow, but it's so simple inside of Tella. Now, real quick, this video is not sponsored by Tella. I'm just a fan of the software ever since I started using it like four or five months ago. And I think if you're recording any videos, your screen or your face or your face and your screen at the same time, Tella is the way to go because it is so easy to use and it's completely browser based. So it doesn't matter if you're on a Mac or a PC. In fact, I'm so excited about Tella. I put together 101 background images that you can use in your Tella edits. If you become a Tella customer through my link down in the description, I'll send you that for free. If you're already a customer, I'll link to how you can grab it yourself too. Just click the link down in the description to figure out how to get your hands on that. If I wanna zoom in on the screen, Screen as I'm talking about something. I'm gonna hit add zoom over here and it's going to give me a couple of different things that I have to play with. So first of all, it gives me this red dot over here. That's the part of the frame that I'm telling it to zoom in 
on. I can also select how far I want it to zoom in. So by default, it was at 200. I can select how fast I want the zoom in and out to happen. Let's hit slow for this. And finally down here in the bottom, I can select how long do I want that zoom to last? So let's do like a short little clip here and I'll show you what this looks like. It's recording me at the same time. See what it did there. So you can adjust these however you think is gonna make sense to you. I can put this cursor bar here in the middle so that I can actually see where I wanted to zoom. See how literally with the click of a button, you can zoom in and zoom out to highlight something specific that you want to show on the screen for your viewer. There are a few other settings in here that I put in my video showing all of the ins and outs of Tela. Now I mentioned that I like to take my Tela edits and pull them into Premiere Pro. And the way that I do that is, let's hit finish down here at the bottom. I'm gonna hit download over here on the right hand side. I can get my subtitles if I want. I'm not gonna worry about those now. And I don't need 4K resolution, but since I'm on the pro plan, I can get it if I want to. What I really wanna do is make sure I have clips exported as individual files and then hit start export. So what that's going to do is take all of the clips in this Tela project and export them as individual files as if I had simply hit record on my camera or on my computer to record my screen and recorded multiple clips. I can import them directly into Premiere Pro and the layout and the background, the zoom in and out features and things like that that I've already edited in Tela are still going to be there when I pull those clips into Premiere Pro. Now it's been quite a while since I did any kind of Premiere Pro tutorial, but if you wanna see how I edit my videos and kind of put the finishing touches before I upload them to YouTube, inside Premiere Pro, let me know down in the comments. And if you want to learn more about Tela, I will link that video up for you here where I covered all of the different features and functions. And don't forget about my pack of 101 Tela background images that you can use for yourself. I'll put a link down in the description so you can find out how to get your hands on that.